My name's Rebecca. I am with the Sierra Club, who's your chapter, and I'm here in Cottage Home neighbourhood on the Near East side of Indianapolis to speak with Larry North, who is an artist and uh, co-runs the shop Badger and Mouse Antique House here in Indy. And I'm going to be asking him some questions about the work that he is bringing to our Human Nature art show which is starting at next month, October 2019, right here in Indianapolis. Larry is currently working on a piece called Siblings for our Human Nature show. One of the things that intrigued me was where and how he sourced his materials. This is what he told me. Uh -huh. um, yeah, this piece that we're sitting here talking about, um, that's, that's all scrap. Okay. And the, the piece themselves, the wood itself came as the offcuts from another project. Okay. The pipe for the steel base is out of the remnant pile at a local pipe shop. So someone had that much pipe cut off and it was just cast away. Um, the lids for the bases are cut from scrap from the, the fall from uh, other projects mm -hmm. when uh, they were cutting quarter inch plate. He said, wait till I have some scrap and we'll cut them. And yeah, so I mean, that's all, uh, that's all reclaimed. It's was destined for the, uh, the waste stream. Mm -hmm. So Cool, thank you. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about when you saw the brief for Human Nature, the exhibition, which these will be featured in, when you saw the brief for that, can you tell me kind of what thoughts it kind of sparked in you? Yeah, at first I thought I was gonna have a really hard time uh, coming up with something and that, uh, really without without that brief without the show asking about um, the interaction and how a piece of art could um, bridge the uh, open the conversation mm -hmm. you know address the point or open the conversation or whatever I wouldn't have done this Mm -hmm. um, there were a couple scraps leaning up against the wall uh, with this that was leaning up against the wall and uh, I looked over and this is after right around the time maybe after I read that brief that uh, I looked over there and I saw those two pieces and it evokes this human form to me anyway you know there's a waist and hips and legs and shoulders and and uh, Yeah, there was a lot of liberation about the brief for the show, these pieces, the thought process of uh, whether or not this was just superfluous art, mm -hmm. you know, just some cerebral construct, whether it was uh, six two dollar pieces of wood with thousand dollars worth of thousands just hours of shining them you know but it um yeah after careful deliberation and deep deep thought conversation with uh, a few people yeah it opens an interesting conversation mm -hmm. as far as i can tell is um unresolved okay and what does that what is that conversation, yeah. do you think? Well, um, so we've got these random forms, right? Uh -huh. uh, random pattern, random shapes, the natural whatever, right? And uh, we see a human form, so we project ourselves onto that. Mm -hmm. We do it a lot, society as a whole. We do it freely and easily and without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, Anthropomorphism, you know, it's it's a common concept. Mm -hmm. Most people, if not, to, like can use the word and know it and whatever, 
they get the concept right away. Mm -hmm. Boom, you get it. So it's part of our our culture, oops, whatever, mm -hmm. right? But to do the opposite isn't. So, um, and it, it it's so much so that we don't have the language to to discuss it. To mm -hmm. we don't have a word for it. Uh, I spoke at length with a. Uh, one of my buddies, uh, a, a deep thinker in his own right, uh, Joel Glansberg, he's uh, dedicated his life to seeing natural patterns and um, using those to develop sustainable systems. You know, he's a permaculture educator and advocate and, and I mean, that, that's his bailiwick and we spoke at length about this yesterday. And uh, yeah, we what we don't have the word for it. The, we, the opposite of anthropomorphism. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you can look it up, and mm -hmm. uh, they'll tell you that the opposite of anthropomorphism is uh, projecting uh, our likeness onto God. Ah. Oh. Well, that's not really what we're talking about, is yeah. it? Not at all. Uh, or it's. The stripping away of the human attribute from someone, right? Which is dehumanization. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not what we're talking no. about. Um, tempted, to, you know. Even when I was talking to Joel, he was like, "Well, we're we're talking about um, oh, I forget the fellow's name that he quoted. Dang it, this Margaret Mead's husband. Okay. I remember that." I have it written down. You'll come to <laughs> Larry sent anyway, me a message. It's Gregory yeah. Bateson. So we're we're in this mindset where um, we see ourselves separate from nature. Uh-huh. In opposition to nature, you know, all those constructs. Mm -hmm. And that's this Newtonian kind of thing where we're set apart from that, you know, mm -hmm. there's, um, there's all kinds of thought that's been had, you know, like the, 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 the dichotomy of the, the causal relationship and it just gets deep and deep and deep, right? Mm -hmm. And there isn't the, 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 the counterpoint is like the biologic pattern. Mm -hmm that's there, that works, that, you know. Yeah, Joel was telling me this story, it's like, so you make a fist, and you look at the back of your fist, and you can see the mountains and the valleys, right? And you open your palm, and you can see the dendritic pattern, the way that um, a river delta is braided when it comes out, the way the tributaries mm -hmm. come in, you know? The swirl on your thumb is the swirl of the, the cosmos, you know. The patterns are there. Right. But it's not... And it's due to that separation, I think, that, you, like you say, the fact that as human beings we've kind of separated ourselves from nature and from the natural world and we see it as something other than us. We see it as ourselves... Mm. as a human race and then we say oh there's a nature I'm going to go out and be in nature right. I'm going to experience nature today as opposed to seeing us all as being one and part of the same thing you know part right. of the same planet part of the same ecosystems like everything is all connected but as a human race I feel like over the years and centuries we've just distanced ourselves more and more from that. So the likelihood of us doing that, of seeing nature in ourselves in the similar manner of what you're saying, becomes less and less. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one of the things that we wanted to do with this exhibition is ask those kind of questions of, you know, um, how has our relationship with nature changed over time? Like, have we, our distancing from it, has that been, like, detrimental to us? you know, as a, as a human race and also detrimental to our planet, you know, right. because if we, the more we can separate ourselves from it, um, the, the less we feel we have to do anything about it or care about it or the more out of our hands, it seems. So, right. 
Um, so that was one of the reasons behind this exhibition and something I feel like you're really addressing with the pieces is bringing that connection back and um, asking those questions and, you know, asking of, of ourselves and seeing what answers that we have, you know, what responses we have to it. Yeah, so. I mean, it's a great conversation because there's so many, so many aspects to it. Mm -hmm. uh, every time I, I talk with somebody about it, there's... A, a little kernel will, will come up, you know, you, you talk about it, us distinct, distancing ourselves from nature and, and automatically my brain goes into some weird pocket and starts thinking about how and why, you know, mm -hmm. it's, well, because we're kind of frail, you know, bald and pink and... You know. <laughs> Those aren't killing machines, you know. These aren't great for harvesting. <coughs> um, so, in, in a lot of ways, the human as a species, mm -hmm. we're only still here because we were able to manipulate the environment, you know. Mm -hmm. And that little bit of distancing was to, to, uh, so we weren't. Mm, dang it! I had to worry just a second ago. Well, anyway, you know, like smallpox. Right. You know, all of those things that were going to do us in, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, part of distancing ourselves is so that we're not... Right. So we don't succumb. Mm hmm Right? And that's, that's part of it. I mean, that's sort of the root of where you can get away from it. Uh -huh. Right? But then it keeps going. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. And are there any artists, either locally or um, from times gone by, which you admire, um, who have been influenced by the natural world, or who've? Um... Mm, I'd say writers more so than, okay. than visual artists. But yeah, there's a handful. And which writers come to mind? Uh, right off the bat, it'd be uh, Ed Abbey with Desert Solitaire. Okay. And his his relationship to that environment um, that's striking isn't it <laughs> blasphemy am I going to get kicked out now I have to leave Shun. I'm sorry Shun Shun at the very over. least <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm going to put that on my to, to read list mm -hmm. sorry <laughs> <laughs> Okay, is there anything else that you'd like to add? No. No. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you. I look forward to seeing these finished pieces. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. For more about our art show, visit sierraclub.org forward slash Indiana forward slash art show.